uh, for in the introduction. Thank you very much uh, to the organizers of the uh, international workshop. And very special thanks to uh, Professor Park for his kindness, her kindness, sorry, for her kindness in, uh, in um, inviting me to Korea, to this uh, university, because uh, I have, uh, it has been a very nice week. And uh, it's, uh, in fact, it is my first visit to, to this country, and I, and I am very grateful to you for helping me to come. So um, the subject is uh, I am going to talk uh, today about uh, the last results I have uh, got in, uh, concerning the volume of vector fields. This is um, a joint work. So the results are a paper who has just appeared in Curl's journal and the, all I am going to talk about today is joint work with uh, Vincent Borrelli from the University of Lyon uh, in France. So let me uh, I introduce the subject. And the subject um, is, uh, comes from a question. So it was a question called the Gluck and Siller problem. And the question is, what we have this field, and this is probably, apart from the, the, the flat manifolds, it is the simplest um, remaining manifold. And we uh, ask ourselves which vector fields on this field will be better. Better, is, as uh, Gluck and Siller uh, define it, they, they ask themselves which unit vector fields on all dimensional spheres are most efficient. Efficiency for them was measured by the volume of the vector field. So let me define first what I mean by the volume of a vector field. A vector field is, one definition of vector fields, a field is, can be just a map of a manifold into the tangent bundle. In that case, it w I assume that uh, my vector field is unit, so it's a um, map to the unit tangent bundle. Uh, let us think at the, by the moment only on this sphere. We are on this sphere, and an uh, uh, element of the unit tangent bundle is just a point of this sphere in a orthogonal vector field. So it is a uh, two frame, and a two frame on the manifold R and plus one. So exactly a, a, an element of the tangent space here is just an element of the stiffer manifold of two frames. In the case of this field, the stiffer manifold of two frames uh, well, in the, the, we, is the tangent unit bundle, and this is an homogeneous space by the quotient of two, the two uh, orthogonal groups. This is a manifold in which we, compute, uh, we can put a, well, a metric. So it's a metric manifold with the usual metric. And when we look at our vector field as a map, we, ha we have the image of the sphere inside this manifold. So the sphere is a submanifold of the, well, this, this V give us a submanifold, which is just the sphere inside the uh, stiffer manifold. And uh, as a submanifold has a volume, a volume here means n-dimensional volume, so the area, if you want, of this, if this submanifold. So if I do the same for all vector fields, I will get different values for the area. And the idea of Gluck and Siller here, they uh, uh, exactly wrote, uh, nice vector fields should be rewarded with less area or less volume. This is, the, this is the problem. If we are looking to the sphere as a submanifold of Rn. In general, this is, uh, well, let's say, the in extrinsic point of view. It is useful, it will be useful in the, fut in the future of the lecture to, to think a, a little differently. 
We are going to forget for a moment that the sphere is inside the, the uh, Euclidean space, and we are looking the sphere as a manifold, as an astral manifold. In that case, we can do the following construction. The tangent unit bundle, the tangent bundle, and in fact the unit tangent bundle is a subset, a submanifold, has a natural metric which is called the Sasaki metric. And, uh, well, let me recall, perhaps not everybody remember at this moment what Sasaki metric is. So, um, in general, um, Sasaki metric can be defined in any bundle. We only need the following. We, need, we have a bundle over a manifold, and we have a metric on the basic space. Suppose that uh, the fibers also, we have a fiber metric. Well, once we have a bundle, we have there. So we can define the following. We have the vertical part. And on the vertical part, of course, we put the fiber metric. As we have uh, G, and that, let us suppose that I have a fiber metric in a connection, fiber connection, D. So this fiber connection is exactly, says me, how to take an horizontal, how to take the complementary. So I, ha I know how to take a complementary. So this horizontal is exactly the tangent to the manifold. So I put on the, on the vertical the fiber metric. I use the connection to the side, which I am going to call horizontal and then I put on the horizontal the metric T. And, well, I decide this to be orthogonal. So I can do this for any, for any bundle, but uh, if I have, uh, uh, well, uh, in particular, if I have a tensor bundle of the manifold, or the, I am going just to talk about TM, which is the case, but uh, if I have this situation, I have a tensor bundle in general, of the tension in particular, uh, once I have a metric, I have all the rest because I use the metric on the fibers as a fiber metric and I use the Levi-Civita connection as the connection. So in the particular case of um, uh, tensor bundles over a man, our we need the uh, 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 yeah, no, yeah. We, If this is a, a tensor bundle, uh, we have uh, always the uh, the uh, we need the connection, but we use the Levi Civita. Yeah, but if in a general bundle, we have a connection. We need a connection. So uh, a Sasaki metric needs, in fact, a, a metric on the base, a connection, uh, a connection, and metrics on the fibers. This is uh, the, the three data we need. But uh, in our, we have a Riemannian manifold, and for uh, these natural bundles, we have the natural metric induced by G and the natural connection on the, on the, on the tensor bundles. So everything comes from the same, from the same metric. Okay. So this is the, the Sasaki metric. Sometimes it's also known as Kaluza Klein metric, which is for physicians. Uh, Kaluza. Klein metric. This is the name used by theoretical physicists for the same object. Well, so it means that if I have, I am just uh, today, I am just talking about the spheres, but uh, in general you can see that where I put SN, I can, I can put any Riemannian metric with this point of view, not the previous one, but now. The extrinsic, extrinsic point of view, uh, sorry, intrinsic point of view, I look at the manifold, I take the metric, I construct the Sasaki one, and it is easy to see that, um, well, the first thing is, which is the volume of, whoops, <laughs> he sleeps. <laughs> sorry. Okay. So, which is the, um, 
uh, the volume and how we can see the volume is the same to think the volume of the image to think, to think the volume of the ma Riemannian manifold where I have my previous M and the pullback of the metric is the same. So I compute the pullback of the metric and in fact what I compute is the relation between the pullback of the metric and the metric at the beginning, G. So the relation of two metrics is given by this uh, endomorphism and it is uh, how co the, the Sasaki metric, as I have defined it, it is easy to see that uh, we have, of course, we, we divide our vector fields into vertical and horizontal, so we have the horizontal part, the metric downstairs, and then the metric on the fibers we need uh, the uh, NABLA, the covariant derivative. So with this formula, and the formula of the volume of uh, any metric, what I get is that the, uh, for the, the volume is just the re square root of the determinant of the endomorphism relating both metrics. I compute the endomorphism there and it's this formula. Okay, so we are uh, here, this is the volume element of the initial metric G, so the round metric. For, for us at this moment. So the, um, well, the, I think the, the problem is, um, okay, it, the problem is, is uh, settled, but uh, let me, uh, before going to, this is the, uh, in fact, this is the first result by Gluck and Siller asserting that uh, you need uh, better fields of minimum volume of the sphere of dimension three are exactly the whole better fields and no others. So in fact, they uh, not only propose the problem, but they find the solution for the sphere of dimension three. Let me make some uh, comments before we go on. So for, by the previous uh, slides, it is, uh, let me go back to the previous, as with the formula, and when looking at this formula, it is clear that the volume of any vector field is always greater or equal than the volume of the round sphere. Second, the equality then holds when nabla b is equal zero. So, yeah, if I just look uh, for, okay, so it is clear that, uh, what is clear, we know that for this sphere it is impossible that a vector field to, to, to be parallel. So this is impossible. So why the problem, because well, this is why the problem is interesting in this sphere. <laughs> okay, the first thing is, we know this is a bound. So it is only greater or equal to zero. Yes, sorry, that the volume of S n. But uh, the solutions will be the, the parallel vector fields. The best will be the parallel vector fields because this will be. But in the case, so if I have a manifold with parallel vector fields, I forget about the blue concealer problem. There is really no problem. The, the solution is parallel vector fields as are the best or the most efficient. This is more or less clear. So the, the problem became interesting because in, on a sphere, for in particular, because the sphere doesn't admit parallel vector fields. And doesn't admit parallel vector fields, then this is why they start thinking about the spheres. And other question is the following. If I take a, a given vector field, sorry, given V, a smooth, and I take uh, uh, the family dn equal 1 over n v, then the volume of dn tends to the volume of the sn. So if I, I look for any better field, it is uh, the solution is clear. Then the, the infimum, the infimum is the volume of the SN, and 
is not attained because it is impossible to attain this infimum. So we need to make the problem a little more <laughs> interesting to fix, uh, to fix the, some normalization. And then the normalization they take is there. So they take now. So the one is looking for the infimum of the volume of V such that uh, V is infinity on this sphere and such that volume is one. Sorry, the, the norm is one. Okay? So this is the reason, this is the reason why if you look for better fields on this sphere with norm equal to one, then your sphere must be of, of dimension. If not, again, we have no problem. Because the op, uh, even dimensional spheres doesn't admit uh, unit vector fields uh, defined by everywhere. No, well, and this is why then Gluck and Siller started in dimension three and show this is was the first case they were considering. So they were considering the space of all unit vector fields on the odd dimensional sphere, the first one, non-trivial, of course, the, not uh, S1. And they found that uh, the solution in that case was exactly hot vector fields and no other. So minimum if and only if the vector field is a hot one. So let us recall for a moment which is a vector field, hot vector field. In general, better f whole better fields are defined for odd dimensional spheres and are related with the complex structure of the ambient manifold. So we have uh, the natural projection of a sphere onto the complex projective uh, space, uh, called M, and N are related by this formula. And, um, we, this is uh, oh, okay. This is a submersion, and the fibers of the submersion the are exactly the round circles. So uh, this is a uh, this uh, submersion describes me the flow of the, the vector field. So the the flow, the lines flow are exactly round spheres. And if we want, uh, in order to make computations it is better to describe the whole vector field as a formula. So the formula, it is easy to see that uh, this uh, a description as, as a vector field is for each point P of the sphere, I take just the multiplication by, by I, by the complex unit. Um, uh, but I would call this uh, the standard, this is the standard complex structure on uh, R, uh, R two m plus 2, and uh, this is the standard Hopper field. Okay, but uh, we have many different uh, complex structures in R, P, uh, R, sorry, and R 2m plus 1, plus 2, and then any, any of these complex structures gives me a, bet, a Hopper field. I will call better field in, the, in Gluck and Siller, call better Hopper field not only the standard one, but any better field of time and then by this, by any complex structure G. So this is um, a, character, a geometrical characterization, if we forget about uh, the exactly how they are constructed, etc. a characterization geometrical of these vector fields are just exactly unit killing vector fields. So in other words, the, the result by, um, by uh, Gluck and Siller can be rewarded saying that the exactly the minimum that of the volume is attained by the exactly by the unit killing vector fields of the S3, which are not parallel but okay, just <laughs> near near being parallel. They have uh, killing vector fields share many of the properties of parallel vector fields many of the geometrical properties. 
It is also interesting for us to see to, uh, what, um, what in, when I had my hot doctor feel, so I put this field into the tangent bundle, the, the, into the unit tangent bundle. So I have, let us write this. I have my sphere by H goes, goes into the, uh, okay, the O4 over O2. I go back to the first definition, because this is the, the unit tangent bundle S3 and uh, but so inside the one of S3 I have the image of this sphere but I consider my when I take the volume what I consider is this sphere with the induced metric so inside the one of S3 inside this uh, genius what they have is a sphere but with another metric which is the induced metric and I can compute this metric, and this metric is exactly what the metric defined by Berger. This is the Berger metric. So it's a metric, H star, the pullback. So this is the induced metric, okay? This is the pullback of the metric of Sasaki. So when acting on H is equal one, and then acting, so this is uh, exactly as G, because G is uh, H is unit, but acting on the complementary in the orthogonal is twice the metric. So it is a metric in which I have the format, the usual metric, only by the lines, or the contrary. I have let the metric on the, exactly the same on the lines flow of the whole vector field, but I have modified in the orthogonal direction. And these are very well known and very well known metrics on the sphere that are Berger spheres. So Berger spheres appears, uh, the metric of the Berger spheres appears also as the um, uh, geodesical spheres of uh, the complex projective space. So it's not the first time one encounters this uh, kind of metrics. The volume can be computed and this is this one. So the infimum for the sphere uh, when we put uh, n equal 3 and m equal 1, then this is the infimum value of the volume. Well, <coughs> now we are, so the problem is, was solved for dimension 3, and uh, very unhappily, the, the, they show also, Gluck and Siller, this was in uh, pap this paper I mentioned before, that uh, the method they used was not possible to generalize it for dimension uh, greater than five, or five and up. So um, the problem is, uh, well, say quite, uh, not to say easy, but uh, natural in dimension three, and for dimension five, it was not possible to, for them to solve. They opened, the, this is what we call the Glucansiller problem, and not just the Glucansiller theorem. So the, um, What we see again is the following. So, if we have our vector fields and we look for those vector fields having the, um, the less volume, um, uh, one possibility to look for that is just to uh, take, well, let us find critical points of the functional volume and among all the critical points, I will take those with less volume. So if they are, uh, the volume is the, as little as possible, then there will be critical points of the volume functional. So one possibility, I, what, I uh, started working on this problem, is, well, let us look for minimal better volume that are critical points of the functional. Then uh, the first thing is to show, I have shown is that critical points of the functional volume restricted to vector fields are exactly vector fields such that the mean curvature so is zero as a manifold. So the first thing I have shown is a relation between my problem and the problem of minimal surfaces in, uh, in the tangent space. So critical points of, the, of this functional 
I show that they are the same as looking for minimal submanifolds coming from uh, coming from battlefields. So I look for the uh, equation of minimal submanifold as, as a submanifold on the tangent bundle. I have an horizontal part and a vertical part for the mean curvature vector field. So this is the vertical projection. This is the horizontal projection. And so, well here, NABLA means the, I have two metrics all the time. So you remember I had the metric, uh, round metric on the sphere and the metric, uh, the star, so the pullback of the metric of Sasaki, which is the metric on the image. And so, I, okay, I can compute in a different way and just to write that the uh, condition for a vector field to be uh, to define a minimal submanifold into the unit touch and bundle is this second order partial differential equation, partial differential a condition. Well, again, this equation can be written in a different way because in previous one, there appears an orthogonal base of the pullback metric. I don't like this kind of equation. So finally, I can put this only in, term, in terms of the square root of the determinant of LB, who was appearing, yes, yet in the formula. I have a, there is uh, the definition of the volume. So the question is, um, after, um, so we have this positive result by, by group and zero. We have an open question, what happens with the dimension is five? And uh, when this dimension uh, is five, of, of more than five, so seven and so on, we have, after some student of Gluck found this result, completely negative, if you look at this, because the, she saw that there are small unit vector fields on this field, for the dimension greater than one that have less volume than hope better field. So for dimension three, hope better field were the best. So hope better field at unit killing world, the, the, the behavior is, is uh, very good. But for dimension five and so, one can find different vector fields. Different, not so symmetric. So the vector fields with less volume of the hope better fields are not so nice, not so symmetric, and not so well related with, uh, with the structure of the manifold. So it is quite surprising because in general, uh, symmetries and <laughs> nice behavior is rewarded with minimality of these properties. So um, the question then is that um, it was, uh, this is the reason why we, I start uh, with uh, uh, other uh, some students to uh, study the minimality of vector fields because we were uh, okay these vector fields how vector fields were not more candidate these uh, ones were not uh, uh, the solu I am going to explain that the result of uh, of Pedersen Pedersen in fact would find it is the following probably in the next um, slides sorry okay. The result is interesting to know not only the negative result, but to know, uh, I want to explain also how she proved this result. The first thing is she considered Pontryagin vector fields that are defined in, uh, not on the sphere, but on the sphere minus one point. So this was the, the first thing. Um, so I will describe after Pontryagin vector field, but let me just uh, say, uh, so the idea, the idea is he found a nice vector field, say, but define it not on the, all the sphere. This has then, by computing, she showed that the volume is strictly less than the volume. And this will be no problem if my vector field P cannot be approximate by a smooth vector fields, because there is no, perhaps I have a vector field there which has singularities and exactly uh, has less volume because has singularities, because I will know him to, to have singularities. But the problem to, uh, in, he needs, what she needs 
is to show that there is a sequence of a smooth unit vector fields approaching, volume approaching to volume P. And this sequence of vector fields have no, I just deformed a vector field, so now I know of this is a candidate. So P is not a candidate to be minimizer because it has singularities and this PK are not candidates because they are just uh, the modifications of, of P. So uh, at this point, uh, the, the result was very, very, very negative because no candidate on site. So this is why uh, I have started to look uh, for variational methods just to find minimal vector fields and among these minimal vector fields just to find candidates, over candidates. And in the, from this, this point of view, just let, let me say that uh, uh, as a consequence of this, um, um, the, uh, the study of and this relation between minimality of the submanifold and having less volume as vector fields, one can show that uh, uh, vector show that f the following that uh, hot vector fields um, <coughs> are minimal submanifolds. So of the <coughs> a manifold O n plus one over O and the Stiefel manifold. So in fact what uh, we show that the for so this is a, a collateral result, we show that for all G almost complex structure <coughs> Oh. Then the subset of, of points of the of the Stiefel manifold of, the, of this form, where we have uh, dimension odd, this this subset is a minimal submanifold of the Stiefel manifold and the that the induced metric is the Berger metric. So that the Stiefel manifold has this a Berger matrix inside and it contains the, this metric, this, uh, this uh, sub, sub manifold as minimal sub manifolds. And this is just a consequence of the, of the, well, of the relation between the vector fields and the and the minimality. So this is some result we, we are not looking for, but we find it. <laughs> right? So this is what, because I, I, I want you to see the relation between this uh, minimal surfaces and the problem, this problem of vector fields. This relation, minimal mm, manifolds and the, the problem, has been completely necessary for us to understand the situation for the most simple example, which is the round two sphere, which is uh, the subject of the paper um, I have mentioned at the beginning. So once one question we see then is, first, that uh, vector fields with singular, also we are thinking only on a smooth vector fields, defined on all this sphere, vector fields with singularities appears in a natural way. So we doesn't want it in singularities, but they appear in a very in a natural way. And second, uh, in fact, is the relation with the uh, minimal surfaces. Well, so let us go to the um, the Pontryagin vector fields, who are going to be the, the <laughs> who have had the main role in the in the last part of my my talk. Which is a Pontryagin vector field? Well, a Pontryagin vector field can be defined in any sphere independent of the, of the uh, of which is the dimension, because the, the only thing I have to do is just I take a vector field in, the, in say, the South Pole, and I, I make the parallel translation along the geodesics. 
and uh, this is quite parallel. This is uh, also a nice vector field. The only problem, nice, uh, well, geometrically nice, define it. The only problem is that uh, when I go to the North Pole, I have no definition because I arrive in any direction. So, in fact, if I want to to have a good definition, I I will need to have the values. I, I will need to add <laughs> all the fiber. I will need to add all the tangent unit bundle in, at this point. It's something like that. If I, I, have, I wanted to def define my vector field, I will need to add a fiber of the T1F. So, uh, Pepperson showed in the paper I had mentioned before that there are minimal immersions of this sphere minus one point for any dimension. So they are vector fields, nicely defined, and they are minimal immersions. So they are, well, in fact, if we allow singularities, they will be candidates. Because minimal immersion, at least they are local, local, local minima. The only problem is the singularity. Now, let me show the picture. This is the flow. Of the, of the Pedersen vector, vector field. Now, my Pedersen vector field are defined in even dimensional um, and in odd dimension. So we think, so why to start in dimension three, as uh, Gluck and Silver has done? Since, the, since the, this Pedersen vector fields enter in the problem very naturally, so the most natural thing is to go down to dimension two and to start looking the problem from, this is a different point of view from Gluck and Siller because they want the unit vector fields well defined all them. But um, we tend to understand mm, the problem why these uh, Pontiagin vector fields are relevant in the problem. In the case of dimension three, we have um, our many, oh, okay, this is a surface, but the, and the tangent bundle, unit bundle is three-dimensional. So we are in a very specific uh, situation because we are just as uh, co-dimension one to manifold, so just surface in a three-dimensional manifold. This is not true for any other dimension because uh, we have more, more co-dimension. So in, in dimension two, there are Many particularities. First, we can draw pictures. <laughs> this is what, this is no no bad. <laughs> At least we can see what happens. And the other thing is, we are very 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 near to surface theory in uh, three-dimensional manifolds. <coughs> well, so we have no we have no vector field. Okay, unit vector fields defined in all the all the. Um, a sphere, but uh, we anyhow we wanted not to take any vector field with any kind of singularities, and because we were aware of this relation with minimal to manifolds, we define what with uh, the cl a class of vector field, no no a smooth, but I call without boundary. So this is definition, and this uh, uh, previous to the definition. Let me um, just uh, told you which is the, what is the result we have got. So the result we have got is that, uh, in fact, for the two-dimensional sphere, the best vector fields, the low, those of this area, are exactly Pontryagin vector fields. And that the best, among not smooth, of course, but with this condition. The condition is the following. I have my vector field, and it's not defined in one, uh, in one, uh, in this case is not defined in one point. I take the image, so the image has, is not closed. So the image is not a sphere, it's a potential sphere, it's a sphere, is the image of this sphere minus one point. Then I take the closure, and when I take the closure, I want to get as manifold, a manifold, a good surface, a good uh, submanifold, uh, say infinity, well defined. This is what is almost, almost smooth. 
So I would call without boundary in the sense that the, when take define it in an open and dense subset, when I take the closure of the image, then it's a smooth so manifold but without boundary. Mm -hmm. no? So if such a better feel, um, okay, this is a description. Okay, if you want to see how they look, oh, if a, such a vector field uh, has, for instance, a number, a finite number of singularities, uh, then can be described as a projective space with some holes. This is the topological description of how. So, okay, let me show this uh, to understand the definition. It is probably good. When I have this, well, the, the question is how the singularity, well, how the index of the singularity is. So I have, this is my, the good vector field, the Pontryagin vector field. The Pontryagin vector field, uh, when, uh, okay, you see he, he, this kind of singularity is an index to singularity. And um, this is more or less a picture near the singularity. So my, my vector field will go, okay, he, he lacks only one point, and uh, you remember that the, the lacks one point because, because he wanted to be in any direction. So when you, to, you take the image, what you get is exactly that. You have an L1 and my vector field close, uh, rounds the S1. So I have um, the image inside is all this field minus one point that I had closed uh, glued to a S1. So it's a projective space. Because it tends to, <laughs> to, to do, uh, okay, this is, well, this is a picture. This is a curious picture because if we make this picture in with, uh, this is S, this is the T1. This is the S1 and this is the flat part. Uh, the picture exactly when this is made by a computer, so it is not <laughs> an imaginary picture. <laughs> an ideal picture is just the real picture. <laughs> it looks exactly like, a, like a, the typical minimal surface of R, R3. Even if the metrics have, this is just <laughs> matter of life. The, the metrics are different. The metric in, the, in this space is the metric on the um, T1 of S2, which is the metric of the uh, space O3. In that case, uh, the, the cosine is just O3, and this is, uh, this is a picture where this part, this line, should be, need to be glued to the, to the other. And this is only a picture of this little part. So we have this, and outside, just a sphere. So this is the part where the projective space came from here. Well, let me compare. This is one, uh, so we have our better field, who, who is round twice, and th this is uh, the way uh, index two it is makes twice, and this is why the vector field, uh, uh, the image, when I take the, uh, the, uh, the closure, the image is uh, submanifold. Uh, let me show, interpret the other picture. There are other candidates that have, have very good volume, and the candidates are the radial vector fields. So I, I my candidates in general tend to be as parallel as possible, and this is one. And then one other possibility, uh, uh, this is vector fields defined also for any dimension. Rather vector fields have, is just, okay, uh, li like that. So parallel, so the, the tangent to the geodesics, tangent to the, uh, to the meridians. So this radial vector field has plus one, plus one. Well, this is the index of the singularity. This has two singularities. And in fact, this vector field has the, the volume of this vector field is just the half of the volume of the, of the Pontryagin. Um, but this vector field, when I, uh, what happens with this vector field? So this vector field has, a, near the singularity here, this is plus one. So near the singularity, the singularity only turns once around the fiber. 
So the so the the, the fiber, the S S one fiber is on the boundary. And the other singularity is the same. So when I take the image of this vector field and I take the cluster, the cluster is a strip with two boundaries. So it is not allowed in my this is not the kind of, of vector fields I am looking for. So the, the radial vector field tends, if I allow singularities, the radial vector field uh, tends to be the best possible, if I allow singularities. But the problem is that radial vector field cannot be approached by the smooth vector fields. So if I allow any singularities, so the problem is different. For me, the problem is that I want to be as smooth as possible. Yeah. <laughs> this is not a radial, but... Uh, <laughs> okay, and the, in this picture, this is one singularity of in this one, around the singularity, the vector field looks like there's helicoid, but half helicoid, not the double helicoid, as this one. Oh. Well, so how to now? Uh, well, the, how to prove the the um, okay? How to prove the the result? So in order to prove the the, the result, I say well, I am uh, my vector field, uh, Pontryagin vector field is the best one and the only. So I use all these ingredients, put more or less together. So let me explain only a little all these uh, three elements I use. Well, one is that uh, this one, that the closure of the image of the Pontryagin field is a totally geodesic RP2. So this one, well, I have been more or less trained to convince you by the picture, but uh, anyhow, the, in the paper there is a proof, not in the picture, it is, it, is, it, is, uh, it is the proof of this fact, because we have a formula, so I am just uh, a sketch of the proof with this ingredient, so say, first is explicit formula, for Pontryagin vector field. So this was the first ingredient, not only the geometrical description, but with this geometrical description, we get the explicit formula. This is why we have been able to, to write the pictures by computer, because we have the explicit formula, and then the pictures are <laughs> done with the explicit formula. So write the explicit formula. This is the uh, step one. After writing this explicit formula, we um, then we show that um, after seeing the formula, uh, we can show that uh, exactly if we have a vector field um, V, uh, you, re you recall, probably you remember that my Pontryagin vector fields were given by I choose a given vector field B. So this given vector field B, so I can take the plane, the plane of containing this B. And uh, in that case, we show that the image, so with the species formula, show that the Pontryagin acting on S2 minus the south pole. So Pontryagin also is two, sorry, uh, is two minus the, the image of the Pontryagin uh, is, the image of the Pontryagin is equal to the projection of the um, grid, uh, grid um, um, sphere, so it's a projection of a grid sphere. It. Projection by mean by the projection uh, of the of uh, uh, sorry into the RP three S three into RP three the degree sphere containing this V. So 
I can, I can exhibit exactly for each Pontryagin to, to say that the image of the Pontryagin is exactly the projection of the big S2, the grid S2. Uh, grid S2. So the projection into RP3. So the projections are exactly the projectives. Uh, the projectives RP2, totally geodesic. So this is three. We know with this method, we know more, we know that the image, that w once we compute exactly the image inside, we see that our grid S2 projected. So we get our RP2, so P of, I would say, S minus the point, is exactly RP2 inside RP3, but totally geodesic. Are not only minimal, but totally geodesic. The totally geodesic RP2 into RP3. So we are, we are very happy. Once we are able to have the explicit formula to compute the explicit uh, image, we, we see that there are uh, the, the uh, RP2. Well, compute, in fact, we compute is the, the closure of the image. Is the closure of the image. We compute that it's exactly the RP2. So this is why we know that there are, this is we know by hand, by computing, uh -huh, that uh, the closure of the image is, total, is the total geodesic. This is not, it's, no, it's not a consequence of a theorem, it's just computing. Okay? So this was an important part to, to realize. And then there is, um, uh, well, this is something well known I have been using, that the, in fact the tangent is RP3, but it's um, more or less, uh, okay. This is well known because uh, for the special case of dimension three, uh, this is um, uh, this is Klinger, Beran, Sasaki, all result, and then we use a theorem by Fomenko, and Berger, a very classical theorem by Fomenko and Berger, saying the totally geodesic RP2 are exactly the the minimal manifold or less volume in his cohomology class, and to so. Berger Fomenko theorem and, four and three, we show that uh, any vector field without boundary has homology class equal to the homology class or RP2. So, this is another technical part to show that. Uh, our definition gives us exactly that the image, the closure of the image of the vector field is in the homology class of the RP2. Well, and that's all. Do you have any questions?